854 bench, multiply gear, 832 single ply, 578 raw, 556 at 242. Don't challenge me with a good time! So normally when I see somebody line up and they have their foot underneath their butt, she just talked about how recently she switched to trying to get her feet flat rather than her being on her toes. Different federations have different rules and so therefore sometimes athletes have to adjust to the rules. Um, I personally like having my feet flat, but there's so many different athletes. There's, there's people that are not even five feet tall and there's people that are nearly seen feet tall. We have all walks of life in this sport of powerlifting. And so you have to find what's comfortable for you. But typically when I see somebody with their foot flat, uh, most of the time I don't really like to see their feet under their butt. When they're on their toe is when you can see their foot under their butt a little bit more if you can kind of mimic that a little bit. And we would kind of see that. And then look at how downward her knee is and how much it raised up her stomach, which she doesn't really have one. She's very flat, right? She's very thin, 121 pounds, deadlifting four, over 400 pounds. But this gives us a really good hip angle to bench press because now everything's so arched, you could fit a football underneath there. She's got a really good arch. So her range of motion is decreased and her stability is increased. But when the foot is flat, it changes the dynamics of stuff a little bit. So I'd like for you to move your feet out that way just a little bit, maybe back a little bit more and have the heel kind of be underneath the hamstring. So move your foot back a little bit more, right about there would be good. And now you wanna to try to push, what she wants to try to do is push all the way through the uh, wall over here, push towards whoever's lifting off for her with her legs and keep her legs tight throughout the, the entire range of motion. She also, Swolisi here, mentioned that she, um, her grip is out really wide. And she'd like to learn if that's the best grip for her. And you have a little bit of a sticking point, right? Off the chest. Off the chest is kind of where she has a sticking point, which is kind of rare to have a sticking point down there. Almost everybody else is somewhere in between that. But when you have your grip that wide, um, it, it involves so much shoulder and so much pec that sometimes the transition gets to be very gets to be very difficult. So we're going to work on a couple of different things with her. I'm of the opinion that whenever I have the opportunity to provide somebody with better leverage, as opposed to a shortened range of motion, sometimes those two go hand in hand and sometimes they oppose each other. I think that powerlifting is about leverage and not always about the shortest distance between point A and point B because if it was always about the shortest distance, we would always try to lift everything in a complete straight line, which doesn't happen. When we bench squat and deadlift, the bar actually will move a little bit. When we bench press, we're trying to go under the Jack and Tan logo here, or right to where it says Tan, and then she's going to press uh, towards her upper pec slash neck area. So it's not always about the shortest dis distance. A lot of times it's purely about leverage, and so we're going to work with her on leverage. One thing I don't like about when the grip is out really wide is that unfortunately gets rid of most of the rules and most of the things that I've learned uh, over the last 25 years, most of those things go out the window because now the lift uh, turned it totally turns into something completely different when the grip is out too wide. So we'll go over that a little bit more as she goes through her sets. A lot of times it's gonna be like chest up and all you can really do is try to maintain some sort of, some sort of good position through like your sternum or your upper body, but you really can't get the elbows in. You can't tuck your elbows and then you can't drive your elbows back out. Flaring is gonna happen pretty much the entire time, especially you were benching kind of the jacked part of your jacked and tan shirt. I would say the nipples, but everybody's nipples are in different positions. <laughs> different spots, right? Up here. And, the, and mine are kind of like here. That's a good spot. <laughs> so when, if you're benching too wide, then some of the rules of breaking the bar like this, and then bringing the weight down and trying to keep your breasticles up in the air and staying tight. A lot of those rules start to really get a little bit weird just because, just because you can't really do it when your arms are out really wide. So go ahead and grab the bar wide. Okay. About right there is good. Yep. 
And then go ahead and tuck your elbows in as, as close as you possibly can. Bring them in. There you go. And then push back up, right? So what happens here is when we press like this, our, our body doesn't get to make any sort of contact with itself. We don't take advantage of some natural leverages. If you look, go back and watch Eric Spoto, who successfully bench pressed 722 pounds at Super Training Gym to break the all-time world record years ago, the only position where he wasn't strong was once he got towards the top, his whole body would shake and he'd have to finish the lift. That's because Eric Spoto has like a 20-inch forearm, like a 22-inch bicep, and when he was bench, benching a little closer than that, then he would be able to use his arms as leverage out of the bottom of the lift. So you're saying that you don't have a lot of leverage. Eric Spoto, even though he was wide, he was still able to rest his forearm on his bicep and his tricep on his lat because he was so damn big. It's like 320 pounds, probably about my height-ish, which is uh, what, I'm about 6'3", something like that, 5'11"-ish, right there, anyway. Uh, so he was able to take advantage of, of his physique and the way that he was built. But again, once, once he was up against the weight himself, without any of those uh, leverages, then he was toast and it was really hard for him to lock the weight out. Yeah. So for you, when you go through that range of motion, the entire time, it's just your shoulders, your triceps against the weight. You don't really get to take advantage of your biceps or your lats, or in my opinion. So let's have you bring your hands in closer. Let's go with this finger on the ring. Now this bar might be a little bit different than the Olympic bar, but it doesn't really matter too much. Her hands are closer than they were, right? Mm -hmm. So now we already created a little bit of a leverage advantage. Look at, we got some contact with the bicep and the forearm here, right? And she's already in a lot tighter and in a lot closer. Think about a squat. When you go to squat way out here like this, it's just, it's kind of just all hips and you don't get to really stack anything on top of itself as opposed to a lot of the uh, smaller lifters will get in here real close or the guys with the big quads and they'll dump their hamstrings right on their calves and bounce off of them and rock it back up. Bench press is going to be the same way. When you get in a little bit closer, we can create more tightness. Not saying that benching in closer is superior to benching out wider. Just saying to try to fix her uh, lack of drive off the bottom, I think that this is gonna help immediately. So the proof will be in the pudding, so we're gonna do it right now. Throw those wrist wraps on and let's get to it. Three, two, one. Good, keep the legs tight. Good, a little faster out of the bottom, drive it up and back. Good. Nice. Good. Smooth. Now, you know, things are not gonna immediately be stronger out of nowhere. We're gonna have to create um, some sort of consistency with this movement in order for her to get used to it. But already it, it at least looked a little bit similar. And in my opinion, she's gonna be able to practice this for a little while. She's gonna be able to attack things from a different angle, a little bit of speed work, a little bit of dumbbell pressing, um, and a little bit of uh, close grip work to build up the strength of the arms and she's gonna be able to take advantage of this new bench style and probably increase her bench by 10 to 20 pounds, which is a lot, uh, when her best bench is about 160? 170. 170, so that's a pretty good percentage of her bench, uh, but I really think that that's gonna be possible. Strengthening your arms is the key to bench pressing. The hard thing is it's hard to manage strengthening your arms because your arms take such a beating. Uh, me with my fuck my elbow shit going on all the time. My elbows are always jacked up. You guys know the story too when you go to do dumbbell tricep extensions and things like that. But you have to figure out a way to do those exercises. Even if it means that you only use 15 pounds on an exercise like that and you're a 400 pound bencher, you have to start somewhere and you have to get uh, in a habit of doing it. Get tighter, here we go. One rep, legs tight. Up and back, up and back, up and back. You got it, you got it. Good job.